The meeting will come to order. Please rise for a moment of silence and the prayers for our men overseas. And Dennis Taremi will lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. The notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 10, has been complied with and shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Barrett? Here. Freeholder Polos? Here. Freeholder Rafano? Here. Freeholder Rios? Here. Freeholder Scott? Here. Freeholder Valenti? Freeholder Director Delina? Here. At this time, Freeholder Carol Barrett will present Carteret with a check. Is the mayor here? Who's going to get it? The mayor? Oh. Yep. And the council president's here also. Good evening, everyone. At our last public meeting on December 3rd, we authorized a $500,000 grant from the Middlesex County Open Space Recreation Trust Fund to help fund improvements to the Sullivan Field at Carteret Park in the borough of Carteret. The field is act actively uh, used by the local Babe Ruth League, several local men and women's softball teams and school teams, and is open to the public when not reserved for league play. The improvements would include a complete reconstruction of the sports field, including synthetic turf and drainage and the construction of dugouts, new benches, a fence, and some other stuff, right? <laughs> We're going to keep that a secret? Yeah. All right. It is my pleasure to present to you, both of you, with this check. No photographer? No photo up? Free, free hold the director, no photographer? No photo up. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you want me to come in a picture, too? No, 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 no. I wouldn't say that. Thank you very much. Freeholder, let me. I was going to have Phillips endorse it tonight and, uh, and cash it. Let me take the opportunity uh, to thank uh, Freeholder Barton, uh, the members uh, of the Freeholder Board, and court, including the uh, first and only Freeholder from Carteret, Freeholder Rios, uh, and, and all the staff uh, for the support from the Middlesex County Open Space Fund to help improve uh, Carteret Park and specifically Sullivan Field. Uh, your support over the past few years uh, has helped us make dramatic improvements and in improve the quality of life for all of our residents, and especially the youth uh, who take full advantage um, of the programs and the recreational opportunities offered in Carteret. And rest assured, you know, throughout the state I've had the opportunities to speak with many mayors and, and freeholders, and very few counties uh, share their open space dollars with the municipalities. And no county uh, provides as much tax relief and shares as much money from the open space fund with their municipalities, uh, as does Middlesex County. So I applaud the Middlesex County Board of Freeholders for their support of the recreational programs, the open space acquisition, uh, and the funding uh, to assist the towns in improving the quality of life throughout Middlesex County, and I thank you. Sure. Susan, you want to say anything? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mayor. Okay, report of freeholders. Freeholder Kara Barrett, do you want to make the rest of your report? Yes, thank you. Um, first, um, I would like to call attention to two resolutions on tonight's agenda that would authorize grants from the county's resolution Open Space and Recreation Trust Fund. Uh, the resolution 092163 would authorize a $175,000 grant to help fund improvements to the Babe Ruth Field in the township of Cranberry. The improvements would cover the installation of irrigation equipment, a new PA system, and the, an electric scorecard as board, and as well the construction of two new rows of bleachers, uh, two dugouts, and a batting cage. Resolution 092162 
would authorize $465,000 grant from the Middlesex County Open Space Recreation Trust Fund <coughs> to help fund ADA improvements to seven city parks in the city of South Amboy. The improvements would cover installation of new ADA compliant playground equipment and picnic furniture, as well as the creation of safety fall zones and the surface st st stability required for wheelchair access at all seven of the parks. The existing playground equipment and picnic furniture at these parks is outdated and does not meet the current ADA requirements. The work would not, not only improve the safety at these parks, but would give more county residents access to those facilities. Um, I believe both of these projects help us reach our goal of providing the best recreational opportunities to our residents. And I would ask my fellow freeholders to support them. Also, I'm thrilled to announce that the Middlesex Co County is moving forward with the Middlesex County Greenway project. Resolution 092246 would accept the project specifications and authorize the bidding process. The Greenway, a 3.5 mile portion of an abandoned rail uh, line in Middlesex County will be converted into a walk bike corridor that will connect the communities of Milltown, Edison, and Woodbridge. Once completed, the Greenway would connect a diverse array of neighborhoods to area parks and in, into a walk bike corridor that would connect these towns. Um, by investing in bikeways, walkways, and alternate transportation modes, we are expanding the local recreation opportunities and offering more ways to have fun and stay healthy. By giving residents the option to walk in a beautiful setting instead of to drive. We can also reduce the amount of automobile congestion and pollution and make our county a healthier place. The long-term benefits of this Greenway are insurmeasurable and we will add to the beauty of our county and increase the quality of life to our residents. I'm also very pleased to report that the 2010 Middlesex County Public Housing Agency Annual Plan has been uh, approved by HUD. The PhD, which, plays, which pays part of the rent and utilities for about 600 needy families, has once again been rated a high-performing housing agency by HUD. So we have a lot of good news to report tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Freeholder. At this time, our Freeholder from Highland Park, H. James Polis, Jimmy. Thank you, Field the Director. Uh, a couple of items. One, I received uh, notice this morning. I'll share with the board that uh, we have been successful in obtaining a $95,000 Department of Highway Traffic Safety grant to assist us with developing additional pedestrian safety and highway traffic safety measures within the county, uh, which would include uh, targeted areas throughout the county for pedestrian safety, um, highway crossings, and so forth, and communities like Old Bridge and Woodbridge and Edison. And um, it's a grant that we've obtained through our Department of Public Works in the past. Uh, we haven't gotten one in the last couple of years, so we're particularly pleased that this one has come through and the paperwork should be coming through for the director to sign, hopefully within the next uh, week or so, and for the board to adopt a resolution um, accepting the grant and appointing the uh, coordinator for that. Um, our Green Economic Development Zone, for those of you who are unaware, is an initiative by the board to try to attract green collar jobs to Middlesex County. I'm sure everyone will agree that our economy uh, is literally, literally at its lowest point. Uh, jobs are, are not plentiful. People are losing um, employment each and every day. And I think all levels of government need to do what they can to try to create as many economic opportunities as we can for our constituents. The Green Economic Development Zone Committee was created as a state-county partnership in order to attract new businesses to our county to fill some of the vacant warehouse and industrial space that uh, exists throughout the county. Uh, we've had two leads so far and one very successful meeting uh, just yesterday, which I want to share with the board. I want to thank uh, Carl Spataro uh, from Economic Development, Jane Brady from Workforce Development, Jeff Merowitz from uh, our department, and Carol Burns for attending on behalf of the county. This was a, a uh, user that came to us as a result of creating the GEDZ, so obviously its creation already has stimulated interest in Middlesex County. 
Um, and the purpose of the meeting was to try to determine what their use is. Uh, this is, has a potential of up to 150,000 square feet and 140 new jobs for the county. And uh, we're going to be working with them and the state officials to try to see if we can put a package together to attract that type of a business to uh, one of our urban centers here in Middlesex County that they've identified as potential uh, locations. So um, we will continue to work in that regard to try to attract new business uh, for green in the area of green collar jobs. Uh, also attended uh, two weeks ago as a result of a recent trip to Washington with the uh, Secretary of Commerce, a meeting with uh, a Taiwanese delegation. There were actually 22 Taiwanese corporate owners of uh, solar technology uh, and green technology businesses in Taiwan who came to New Jersey, uh, half of whom were interested in perhaps situating and creating new companies within New Jersey. The purpose behind the meeting was to meet with them uh, and express to them uh, Middlesex County's open interest in trying to attract new business. And of course, uh, their business and dollars that they would invest here would create jobs for us uh, and for our residents, which I think is an exciting opportunity. So we'll continue to monitor the progress of that and see what type of interest we can create. Um, last week, I attended on behalf of the uh, Freeholder Board a wonderful uh, ceremony at the uh, governor's um, home at Drumthwacket. I'm um, pleased to announce that Middlesex County received the Governor's uh, Environmental Excellence Award for our work in developing uh, the county's, the state's first sustainability plan, also our work in uh, green technology and helping our communities implement green technology throughout New Jersey. Uh, the award was uh, not something that was provided lightly. It wasn't a political award. There was a team of 30 environmental experts that were assembled to assess different types of activities and programs throughout the state. And again, we're very pleased that Middlesex County received uh, the award for the category of sustainable communities. And um, last but not least, some of you may have read in the paper, and I'm sure the Freeholder Board did, pleased that we were able to be a, an integral part in assisting Dunellen and Rutgers University in developing a shared service uh, for the public safety dispatch services for those two agencies. Rutgers University will now be providing dispatch services for Dunellen. Uh, this is a very exciting shared services. The savings for the community will be approximately $100,000 a year for a small town. I'm sure you can realize that that's a significant tax savings for them. It has opened up a new opportunity where other communities may look to Rutgers for the opportunity to provide additional service. Uh, and it's the first state municipal partnership in this area that was developed in New Jersey. So we're pleased that it happened here in Middlesex County. And once again, as I say to my colleagues, it underscores the importance of Middlesex County's role in developing shared services within our communities and within our school districts. And with that, uh, I'll turn it back to you, Director. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much, Freeholder. Our next Freeholder from the Borough of South River, Christopher D. Rufano. Thank Christopher. you. Christopher. Thank you, Freeholder Director. It's going to come as a shock, but I don't have a report tonight. Um, <laughs> um, oh. on the way here. <laughs> I just want to wish all our citizens in this great county of Middlesex a happy, healthy, and a safe holiday season. Thank you. Okay, that's the best you. report anyone that can is, give. Isn't it good? Yeah. yeah. I ripped up his papers. That's why he has no report. <laughs> good move. <laughs> our next freeholder from the borough of Carteret, Ronald G. Rehos. Thank you, Director. Our health department continues to aggressively work in distributing the H1N1 vaccine throughout our different school districts, and everyone's been very cooperative, all our superintendents, all our Board of Education. And to date, 14 school districts have completed their first round of immunizations to the students. And everyone's been very cooperative and understanding that the demand is so great and the supply is so short. It's not just limited to local districts. It's not limited to Middlesex County. It's not limited to the state of New Jersey. It's all over the country. And we read that. I just want to reemphasize that. As soon as we get it, as soon as it's available, we will continue to provide all our residents, especially the target area, the students, uh, children, uh, that we will get them uh, dealt with. I want to congratulate Padma Arvin. She has been selected to be co-chair of the American Public Health Association Community Health Planning and Policy the Development Division for the, for the year 2010 and chairperson for year 2011. And I have to say that Padma, uh, she, she works so hard and she's really a great asset to the health department. And we're gonna be partnering. Uh, she's gonna be working together with uh, the Cancer Institute of New Jersey as well on doing some type of cooperative effort there. As far as Rampton Bay Mental Health Services, our uh, 
continue to have an increase in demand for services for our clients, and we're up to the demand, and our staff is working aggressively for that because of the economy. And, uh, I would like, like to also wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy New Year, and a healthy New Year to all our citizens in Middlesex County. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Okay. Our next freeholder from Piscataway, Millie S. Scott. Millie? Thank you, Freeholder Director. I'd like to uh, mention that Judge, uh, former Judge Hoffman, Bernard Hoffman, um, has an ASAP program, a substance abuse program at the Correction Center, and he was honored last Wednesday down in the Senate, given a proclamation. And one of the young people that, that is presently in the program was addicted to uh, drugs. And at the same time, he was, his mother was housed there, addicted to drugs. And his mom passed away while in the institution. And both mother and son were both at the same time. He got up and he spoke about it, the program, and how much this program has helped him. He's been in the program, I guess, about six weeks now. And he's probably getting ready to graduate from the program. And he's been addicted since he was a baby, born addicted child. And he said this program is the first program he's finding that is very helpful for him. And it was very um, heartwarming to see him down there and discuss it with the uh, senatorial people down there. And I think they received this program very highly. And it's a program that's been in effect, I guess, for about uh, 10 years now, and started by Judge Hoffman when he was on the bench as a judge. And this is way of Judge Hoffman giving back to the community. So I was very happy to be able to be down and be part of that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Freeholder. Our next Freeholder's report from New Brunswick, Blanquita B. Valenti. Blanquita? Thank you, Freeholder Director. I want to apologize for having been late, but I was asked by my uh, daughter-in-law to, to take my granddaughter back to school, and that's uh, Bishop R. And it took me in the round trip an hour and 45 minutes from New Brunswick. So my apologies to the board, to the staff, administration, and of course the, you, the public that is here. Um, likewise, I want to uh, have a short report, but I, I can't let this go by. Um, we have a homeless person's Memorial Day, which has been recognized um, on the first day of winter since 1990. And uh, December 21st, which is this coming Monday, is the longest night of the year. And for those who are homeless, this extended period of darkness embodies the harsh elements of their lives. Uh, so we're inviting the public at large, as well as uh, anyone who would like to come and who are part of our New Brunswick um, coming home, uh, for example, to come to Monument Square at 5 p.m. on Monday, uh, God willing, and um, there will be service providers, advocacy organizations, and throughout the county, they will join in partnership to both honor and memorialize all those who have died homeless from exposure to the elements due to a lack of adequate health care, victims of hate crimes, and other complications. And uh, this contingency of participants represents a wide number of people. Middlesex County Human Services Advisory Council, the Middlesex County Housing Continuum of Care Committee, United Way of Central Jersey, DIFUS, MIPH, making it possible to end homelessness, Elijah's Promise, and of course, as I mentioned before, coming home of Middlesex County. And there's a, a, a short program. It's, there's a schedule of events. And um, uh, I, I think that it's going to be a beautiful event, and it will culminate with some refreshments at the United Methodist Church immediately following these events across the street from Monument Square. I also want to call the attention of, of my fellow colleagues, uh, Resolution 2257, 092257, where we are taking a, a very large first step toward um, our endeavor of helping those that are homeless. And this is an execution of, uh, of an agreement with Reformed Church of Island Park Affordable Housing Corporation. It, uh, it represents 11 units of low-income homeless veterans housing and $700,000 of County Housing First Capital Fund. And I want to thank my <coughs> colleague uh, Carol Barrett, who uh, has been so cooperative 
with our group and uh, we wanted to make sure that this they were not going to bring veterans from Timbuktu but the, the one of the requirements is that they should be veterans from Middlesex County that are homeless so <clears throat> I urge everyone on this board to kindly uh, vote favorably and I do have a letter from the Office of Veterans Affairs uh, of the United States where it, it tells us that for sure it will only uh, be covered those that are Middlesex County residents or former residents. And uh, last but not least, I just wanted to announce that McFoods will be open on Tuesday instead of, usually we're open on Wednesdays uh, from nine to noon, but because of the holiday and trying to help people that need the food in advance, we will be open on Tuesday from nine to 12. And I want to wish everyone here, <coughs> as we say in Spanish, felicidades, and that covers all the festivities uh, that are so beautiful during uh, this time of the year. Uh, and to all that are here, um, <coughs> a special recognition for coming and being here with us tonight. And again, felicidades. Okay, thank you, Blanquita Valenti. I like to not this time, this is my last meeting as a freeholder director. We have one more meeting, which is two weeks at the signing die meeting. I had it, I've been a freeholder the deputy director for 13 years, and when Dave passed away, I was honored to be the, the director. And this has been a great year for me. I've met a lot of nice people, and I really enjoyed being here. And that also, at the end, I'd just like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and Happy Yom Kippur. God bless you all. Thank you. I forgot Suzette. <laughs> I got so excited. Suzette, I apologize. In my last meeting, I got, oh, man. <laughs> I got shingles, so don't worry. I'm squirming. Uh-oh. <laughs> Suzette is the Cultural Heritage Commission that's going to make a presentation historical marker for the Quaker Meeting House in South Plainfield, where John uh, Polomino lives. Thank you, Freeholder <laughs> Director. <laughs> <laughs> and if the South Plainfield group would join us, please. I'm Suzette Dado, Commissioner with the County Cultural and Heritage Commission, and with me are Katie Zavosky, who coordinates the Historic Marker Project under the direction of our ABLE leader, Anna Ashken is. And this is Susan Kittridge, the Assistant Director. And with us are South Plainfield Mayor Charles Patrico and may members of the South Plainfield Historical Society. The Cultural and Heritage Commission works with area communities and historic groups to promote local historic sites that are significant in the history of Middlesex County and yet may be little known to the public. With funding by the Board of Chosen Freeholders, the historic markers are installed at historic sites in the public right of way and on view to all who are walking or driving by. Tonight, we're pleased to present a historic marker for the Quaker Meeting House in South Plainfield. We have brought a lightweight version, a replica of the marker, and that's what it will look like. And the marker reads, the first European settlers in this area were members of the Society of Friends, Quakers, who came from the regions around the cities of Edinburgh and Aberdeen in Scotland. Encouraged by the East Jersey Board of Proprietors, they made their homes along the Cedar Brook in the early 1680s. In 1736, a meeting house was constructed and a cemetery was established here on land donated to the Society of Friends by John Liang, a local Quaker landowner. American soldiers were said to have been quartered in the meeting house in the winter of 1777 during the Revolutionary War. The property remained in use until 1788 when needing a larger meeting house, the Quakers moved to a site on what is now Wachong Avenue in the city of Plainfield. There it remains to this day. And I'm most happy to present this marker to the uh, mayor and members of the Historical Society.
Freeholder Director Delina, members of the Freeholder Board. Uh, on behalf of South Plainfield and particularly the Historical Society, I want to thank you for once again awarding us this, uh, m this uh, monument. This is our second one, and uh, as anyone knows, uh, history teaches us all we need to know about what we need to do to go forward. And it's so important to re reflect on the areas in our town that really had a, a, a difference in the past. This is one, actually, I think Paul Amino used to actually meet with these people. Isn't that true, John? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's actually right by where he is. But yeah, right by it. <laughs> but uh, I do want to thank you. I do want to introduce, though, uh, Charlie Costner and Shirley Boguski. They're both here from the history. They do a great job. And uh, on behalf of South Playful, we truly appreciate it. Thank you. OK, at this time, we're going to consider resolution. Number 09-2272 on page 12. Uh, yes, Friel, the director, uh, I will be recusing myself on this matter since uh, my law firm has provided legal representation to the applicant company. Uh, taking my place on the dais will be uh, Nikki Athenasopoulos, who's a uh, deputy county counsel. Uh, Nikki actually handles all of the Solid Waste Advisory Council matters for my office, and uh, she will be taking my place on the dais for this Okay, matter. good. <laughs> Sorry to leave. That's all right. Don't come back. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> okay. Now this is the resolution zero nine two two seven two. We'll be discussing, right? Correct. Yes. And then what do you need? Go ahead. We need some. Uh, go ahead. Open up the public. Uh, freeholder director, members of the board. Um, you have been provided with materials relevant to resolution number 09227 for consideration of inclusion of Solid Waste Management Plan Amendment 2009-1 to include in the Middlesex County Solid Waste Management Plan as a transfer station and materials recovery facility, 986 Jersey Avenue, LLC. In consideration of plan inclusion, this board can approve or reject a facility's application for plan inc inclusion. Approval for plan inclusion does not authorize the applicant to operate the facility as a transfer station or materials recovery facility. Before this facility may be actually constructed, acquired, or operated, the applicant must obtain the, approval, the approvals necessary by the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, as well as such other regulatory approvals as may be required based on the nature of the site and the proposed facility. Moreover, the NGD NJDEP reviews and sets the terms and conditions of every solid waste facility and the recycling center's approval, including but not limited to the capacity, hours, dust control measures, and other processing technology. This board is vested with the authority after consultation with the Solid Waste Advisory Council to adopt amendments to the Middlesex County Solid Waste Management Plan. The SWAC is a statutorily appointed advisory board upon which this board relies upon to make recommendations as to the approval or disapproval of a plan in inclusion application. Thus, their recommendation carries significant weight as to when the board renders their final decision. Prior to making their recommendation to this board, the SWAC reviewed 986 Jersey Avenue LLC's application in accordance with the criteria established by the NJDEP for applications for plan inclusion for transfer station material recovery facilities. The NJDEP criterion takes into account whether the facility and the operations of the facility would have a significant impact on the environment, property rights, and the surrounding areas. At its March 10, 2009 meeting, the SWAC voted to make a recommendation to this board to approve Plan Amendment 2009-1 after consideration of the plan amendment the presentation of the applicant, 986 Jersey Avenue, LLC, the position of the host community, New Brunswick, and the findings of the site inspection subcommittee. A public hearing was convened on April 22nd for the purpose of hearing persons interested in or who would be affected by the adoption of the Solid Waste Management Plan Amendment, and for those who were in favor of or are opposed to such adoption. This board was provided with a transcript of the public hearing together with the written comments submitted by the public officials and residents of North Brunswick in opposition to the plan amendment. Based on the proofs that were submitted and the recommendation of the SWAC, this board is now asked to consider plan inclusion of plan amendment 2009 
dash one to include in the Middlesex County Solid Waste Management Plan as a transfer station materials recovery facility located at 986 Jersey Avenue in the city of New, New Brunswick. Before this resolution is called for a vote, I would like to refer to Mr. Richard J. Hills, the division head to the Middlesex County Division of Solid Waste Management, who will give you a brief overview of the procedural history of the application for plan inclusion. Mr. Hills? Richard, you here? No. No, you're not here? <laughs> come back next week then. Good evening, three brothers. You want to um, come up here, Rich, at the mic? The people could hear you better. I got a pretty good voice. I, think I know you do, you have a good voice. Good evening, freeholders. Um, I'm here to give you a brief overview on the information that was sent to you concerning the application filed by 986 Jersey Avenue LLC. When the application was originally filed pursuant to criteria of the county that was approved by the Solid Waste Advisory Council, recommended to the Board of Chosen Freeholders, who then adopted the criteria, and then ultimately certified by the DEP. Those criteria were provided to the applicant on 86 Jersey Avenue, and they did indeed file an application for plan inclusion that was consistent with all the criteria on January the 9th, 2009. In that they had met the guidelines established in the criteria, we were able to schedule the preliminary introduction of the application to the Solid Waste Advisory Council, which is appointed by the Board of Chosen Freeholders, at their meeting in February. Procedurally, after the initial presentation and the facts are uh, provided to the Solid Waste Advisory Council and any questions raised by the council are, are responded to at that time, the chairman of the SWAC requests the assembly, a request for the volunteers to assemble a Solid Waste Advisory Subcommittee Site Inspection Group. And indeed that did occur. A Site Inspection Subcommittee was formed and by our procedures, the chairperson of the Site Inspection Subcommittee is the municipal representative from the host town. So Ms. Donna Caputo, who is the mayor's representative for New Brunswick, chaired the Site Inspection Subcommittee, and seven members of the Solid Waste Advisory Council requested to, or volunteered to serve on that uh, Site Inspection Subcommittee. Indeed, the site inspection was performed. Uh, there were representatives there from the applicant that responded to questions raised by the members of the committee. Uh, the committee report uh, was provided at the following meeting in March uh, by the chairperson. Uh, and after uh, additional conversation and comments back and forth between the advisory council and the applicant, uh, by a unanimous vote, SWAG recommended the uh, inclusion of this transfer station materials recovery facility to the Board of Chosen Freeholders. We had received an application from 986 Jersey Avenue LLC that initially had indicated they wished to be included in the county plan under the name of ARO, E-A-R-O, LLC. They informed us shortly thereafter that they were changing the name over to 986 Jersey Avenue LLC. I have to tell you, I've been doing uh, plan amendment reviews and applications for a good number of years. I would consider this application as provided by 986 Jersey Avenue LLC to be one of the most voluminous and one of the most thorough applications that I got. Maybe not necessarily at the onset of, the, uh, of, of providing us with the application, but over the course of time from the submission of the application all the way through this past week. I have been receiving continual updates that have been provided to the Solid Waste Advisory Council from the applicant concerning issues that predominantly were raised at the public hearing on April 22nd. You have a package that was submitted by me to you uh, that incorporates all the documentation that I am required to provide to you uh, for your consideration of this application's plan inclusion. That, of course, includes the transcript, copies of all the, the written statements. I even include the emails that I received on it and a petition signed by a number of area per, uh, people that were concerned with the proposed application. 
As a result of that, um, we again took a look at the application. We reviewed all the information on file and additional information was provided without us requesting it by the applicant addressing the eight major areas of concern that were raised by the public during the public comment period at the public hearing and the week following the public hearing to provide us with um, written documentation. The, it's very important to note that the initial process of plan inclusion absolutely unequivocally requires that the applicant file an application for inclusion in a county solid waste management plan. The New Jersey DEP will not review and accept and ultimately permit a solid waste facility in any county without the county plan inclusion. And there is only one body that can um, basically approve, officially approve plan inclusion. And by statute, it's the Board of Chosen Freeholders. And you relied on the, you relied on the advice of your Solid Waste Advisory Council. And I act as the administrative arm of that advisory council. And my office is basically the office that receives all the documentation, filters through the documentation, and requests the applicant to provide any clarification that we feel is important. We did indeed receive a number of documents addressing the concerns that were raised at the public hearing. But I'd also like to tell you that we have a rapport established with the New Jersey DEP. And that rapport includes knowing what they will require when that application comes to them for review, consideration, and ultimate approval. And this is not an overnight process. But just to give you an idea of the in-depth analysis that the New Jersey DEP will give us, will give this application. The applicant will be required to provide a traffic impact study, a noise impact study, an environmental health impact study, a storm water quality and management study, an air pollution study, a certificate of public convenience and necessity permit filing, an A901 licensure permit where the state police get involved with re review of the applicant and its background, the New Jersey Department of Transportation and the Freehold Conservation District. All of those reviews and approvals are a part of the DEP's review process. Once all that review process is done and the Board of Chosen Freeholders has decided that they would, improve, would approve the facility in the county plan, the DEP, after their re review and determination that the applicant has filed an administratively complete permit, they will then uh, issue a solid waste facility permit. This is not again an overnight process. This will take a number of months to achieve. One of the most important documents that I've received in the last several weeks is a correspondence from 986 Jersey Avenue LLC. And the irony was that this document was provided to me after I wrote the, the response to comments. And that document ironically addresses every issue that was raised at the public hearing and what the applicant intends to do to address those issues in its application filing and in conjunction with the application filing with the New Jersey D DEP. They have also agreed that they will do this at the direction of the Board of Chosen Freeholders so that it will uh, basically comply beforehand with everything that the New Jersey DEP will require. They have agreed to do an additional traffic study which will, which will meet all DEP and New Jersey DEP permit regulations. They have agreed to do an environmental study and a noise impact study and an air pollution study. They have agreed to only process ID 13 waste. ID 1313C waste is only bulky waste, large bulky items, lumber, appliances, furniture, things like that. They dropped from their original application their handling, their receipt and handling of what is referred to as ID-10 municipal waste. And for all intent and purpose, ID-10 municipal waste is patressable waste. That waste which currently goes to the landfill in East Brunswick 
and that waste which would be the source, the predominant source of any potential odors emanating from the disposal of solid waste. They have also agreed, and they were also basically informed by the DEP, that they will, the DEP will request them to install an air curtain over the entrance and exit doors of the facility. Now this air curtain is designed to cause a negative pressure in the building that will keep any potential for fugitive emissions inside the building and not allow it to, to go beyond the property line. They have also redesignated an area that they had originally called a special waste area which raised a number of eyebrows at the public hearing. The special waste, what is special waste? So what we did, or what the applicant has agreed to do, is that, and at the, and at the request of the DEP, they will redesignate this area as a recovered materials area with the strict intention that it will be used solely for the purposes of handling oversized ID-10 and ID, I mean, ID-13 and 13 waste. Things like large iron beams and large pieces of steel and things like that that cannot be moved in, indoors and handled effectively. They are going to be prohibited by law from accepting any hazardous materials in their waste loads. They must address this in a document that they will need to comply with with the DEP in their operations and maintenance manual that is an integral part of the DEP's permit process. They have agreed, above and beyond what the DEP would call for, to take additional steps to provide uh, additional landscaping uh, and aesthetic value uh, uh, program to the Frisch Park, which is located opposite the site in North Brunswick Township, by installing additional vegetative plants and things like that so as to, again, aesthetically improve the area of the park. And importantly, what they've done, this is going to be the first rail disposal facility in the county. We have, this will be the, if approved, this will be the fifth transfer station in the county. Of the five, this will be the only facility to dispose of its solid waste via train. The advantage of this, obviously, is that you cut down on the outgoing traffic that is currently being used by the other transfer stations that goes out by truck, thus reducing the carbon footprint. And in addition to that, this operation of moving the rail cars will only occur during daylight hours and will only be changed under the, uh, under the possible uh, cause of rail strike or snowstorm or something that was completely unseen and had, could not be predicted. We, in addition to the summary, got copies of the proposals that have been executed by the applicant for these additional studies. And I have to tell you, these additional studies are, in my estimation, addressing the concerns that were raised by the public at the public hearing on the 22nd. They have agreed to do existing physical uh, studies of traffic at the intersections of Jersey Avenue and Howe Lane. They have agreed to do manual traffic counts at the intersection of Jersey Avenue and Howe Lane. They will, um, they will include a revised um, study on the effect of the use of train disposal versus truck use to take materials off-site. They will estimate, and I think this is very important because a number of questions were raised at the public hearing concerning the impact upon, the potential impact upon the traffic in the area of the new high school that New Brunswick uh, is uh, currently constructing. They, est they will estimate future traffic volumes on the adjacent roadways for the no build and build conditions that will include estimated volumes of traffic of the New Brunswick High School to be located on Route 27. And I think importantly, if, if the build conditions exceed the New Jersey DOT allowable decreases in level of service or vehicle delay, a capacity analysis, uh, analysis will be conducted to identify potential mitigation measures to bring the intersection 
into New Jersey DE, uh, DOT standards. And again, I've got copies of all these documents. A separate document was submitted to me at that time, wherein the solid waste facility permit application that will be filed by their consultant will include a comprehensive environmental health and impact study, a New Jersey DEP noise study, an engineering design report, and an operations and maintenance manual. And I can tell you from my experience, these are not thin documents. They are quite extensive and they require certification by professionals. And with that, I can only again reiterate the fact that in my tenure as the division head of solid waste management, this has been one of the most extensive, one of the most in-depth, one of the most responsible from the perspective of submission of necessary documentation and reports that I, that I have seen. There was few, if any, questions that I needed to raise and any, any questions that I needed to raise to our satisfaction were addressed in a very expedient manner. Yeah. Eddie Freelder would like to ask Rich any questions. He, covered, he did a pretty good job on that. He covered it pretty good. Anybody has any kind of a question? Yes, Jimmy. When you speak about the regulations that would be required or that would be placed upon the applicant as a result of the board's approval and what SWAC has recommended and so forth, what is the mechanism for the applicant to change that or to um, if there's an interest to change that at some point in the future, what is the mechanism that one would have to go through to alter any of the approvals that you've indicated? Approvals by the county? Correct. For plan inclusion? It starts all over again. <coughs> if they come back, there are two provisions in the state regulations that pertain to counties and their inclusion process. One, if certain things are required or requested by the applicant, for instance, an increase in capacity, a change in waste type, anything like that. It needs to come back through a full plan amendment process, which requires an application, uh, submission to SWAC, a public hearing, the whole gamut. If it's something that falls under the purview of what's called in the regs an administrative action, these are minor changes they may be changing the way in which their truck routes will go. Doesn't allow them to go above their approved uh, tonnage per day, but they may be changing a route from north to south. Or they may be changing, they may, they are allowed in the regulations under this uh, auspice, they are allowed to uh, make a, a, an insignificant change in their waste volume of less than 100 tons per day. And there are about 10 items that which we could do it administratively, which does not require a public hearing. However, there is a caveat in that portion of the administrative regs that says at any point in time that it is deemed appropriate, we can require the applicant to, to uh, uh, attend or schedule and attend another public hearing. And that's, the, that's at the option of the county. And I did forget to mention Freeholder. This whole process that we are going through will now, if approved by the board, go to the DEP. The DEP, when all is said and done on their end, will start the public hearing process all over again. The applicant will, the, the municipalities within, I believe, the, a range of two miles will be advised of the application and a public hearing will be advertised by the New Jersey DEP before the DEP approves on the, app, the final application. Okay, Jim. Thank Anybody you. else from the board? Okay, at this time, we're going to go out to the public. You have five minutes. Anybody like to push? Yes, sir. Good evening. Um, I'm uh, Ralph Andrews. I'm the council president from North Brunswick. Um, I'm here this evening representing our, our mayor and our council. Um, I'd like to thank um, uh, Division Head uh, Richard Hills for uh, running a very uh, uh, professional and uh, constructive process when we had the hearing back in April. Um, he, it was a very courteous process to all our residents. We had a lot of residents come out and uh, it was good to see that uh, I got copies of the reports. 
he recorded every single comment that everybody made. And um, uh, recently, uh, we had uh, some meetings with uh, Mayor Cahill and uh, Mr. Patterson from uh, uh, New Brunswick. And uh, at that time, this amendment, which is what I think he was referring to, 986, uh, Jersey M to December 8th, um, as he said, they went through sections and they grouped the various comments together, but it appears that they've uh, answered uh, the concerns that, that our residents had and the residents were living in the area. And um, I want to thank the mayor from New Brunswick for working together with us and, and and bringing the applicant in. And uh, I'd also like to thank the freeholders. I know we've reached out to many of you, our residents have, uh, and, and uh, Administrator Polamina, and they've been helpful in getting information to us. And um, it, it appears that uh, the process works. The public uh, has come out and made comments, and the comments have been addressed. The, 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 the developers in this case uh, have been very responsible and have been interested in making sure that uh, that uh, the concerns of the residents in the area are met. Um, the, the last major thing, which I know there's going to be an additional environmental study, which they've agreed to, and I, we have documents of that from Birdsall, uh, and also the traffic study. Um, whether anybody built anything in this spot or not, we all know that the, that particular corridor has been a problem for the, any county residents, for New Brunswick, North Brunswick, Franklin, which is in Somerset County, but the um, Howe Lane uh, area at this point in time is uh, a problem with traffic and we just asked that once we get that study we have some information that we've been doing in our town we've been doing some extensive traffic studies that we'd like to share with you and see if uh, we can work together with New Brunswick and, and with the county if there's anything we can do to, to possibly straighten out some of the, the timings. I know the light timing at, uh, at uh, Jersey Avenue and uh, and also at uh, Livingston Avenue, especially with the students which, which are going to be moving over there now on the buses and stuff. We need to do something to improve some of those intersection timings. I think they're, they're, they're pretty close to failed intersections. So if you would indulge us, and once we get that study information back, uh, we, we had a proposal on one of our master plans about talking about a roundabout at, the, at uh, Livingston Avenue. It might be something to help, but that's something once we get the reports back. But I just wanted to come out tonight and thank everybody for for their help and support. Our residents have supported you guys and we're, 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 we tell them that we have friends here and you've, you've demonstrated that and we'd like to thank our neighbors in New Brunswick for sitting down with us and, and making, reaching out and meeting with us. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Councilman. Yes, sir. Good evening, Freeholder, um, Freeholder um, Director and Freeholders. My name is Carlos Socio. I'm a resident of the, of the McAuliffe uh, Drive neighborhood, councilman in, uh, in North Brunswick Township also. I'd like to come out on behalf of the residents of the McAuliffe Drive area, reiterate our concerns about this project. Again, everything has been noted. I want to thank Mr. Hills uh, because, like, you know, throughout this process, he has been very helpful, very informative. We in the McAuliffe Drive area have big concerns about this project, concerns about the traffic in general. Uh, as, uh, as, 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 you know, Councilman Andrews mentioned, uh, the um, predominant intersection of where the traffic's going to, like, you know, um, travel through uh, Howe Lane and Jersey Ave is pretty close to a fail intersection already. Um, we are concerned about the traffic uh, flow through there, how it's going to affect that intersection along with Route 27 and Howe Lane, Living Sumpton Avenue and Howe Lane. And we look forward to the additional traffic analysis to see what that uh, eventual impact will uh, or like, you know, is going to be. Um, as has been mentioned already, the project is directly across from Frisch Park. It's a park that has been recently renovated, is really uh, highly u utilized by is, and is highly utilized by all of the children in that McAuliffe Drive area, my, my own two, like, you know, children in, uh, included. I know that in the um, amendment um, 9, 9, 986, Jersey Ave LLC has mentioned that they're going to be including uh, additional landscaping trees in order to help screen the area and uh, give us more of an aesthetically pleasing look there. My question is, 
and this has happened with with, with like you know other projects w within our township if the initial plannings fail you know the trees die or something like that how can we have any recourse in order to contact 986 Jersey Ave LLC in order to get them back out there and try to re and try to replant what was attempted once already we definitely want some some kind of recourse in order to ensure that whatever is planted is going to take it's going to be successful and will get its uh, achieved um, goal um, out there. So I don't know who to even address that to, for the director. Uh, Can you hear that, Rich? Did you hear the uh, question? Yes, we heard the question. And generally, in uh, doing, uh, my name is Robert Falls, I'm the principal of 986 Jersey Avenue. Okay. Uh, in the process of making this installation, we would also provide to the township of North Brunswick a maintenance bond for a period of two years to ensure that whatever is installed can get through to growing Okay. To ensure that you will get what you uh, anticipate. Great. Thank you. Um, we did mention also the um, air curtain and um, other environmental controls there. Again, if I can ask Mr. Hills, I'm not sure which way to direct the question, but can we be assured that if, like, you know, this air curtain, if this air curtain or this negative pressure barrier fails? What will happen? Will like you know the operation shut down, or will we be dealing with potential um, debris or stuff coming out of there? I mean, what what exactly would happen in the event of failure of the air, well, air curtain or stuff like that? Yes, the, the air curtain and also the air quality of the facility is monitored by what Wayne Lodge called black boxes, where it uh, records what the air quality is within the building and that ensures that. The Devices such as air currents from doors that go up and down, and the New Jersey DEP monitors that on a periodic basis, uh, as much as once a month. And if they find that the air quality is not proper, they will warn us, and we only get one warning. And then, so it is monitored, and will be monitored throughout the life of the facility. But again, if I may, is there any real-time control there that if something breaks down? that like you know we know what's or that not that we know but that like you know you guys on site know and you have to do something I mean I mean like once a month is great but It was mentioned that the initial application contained municipal solid waste that has since been amended and it's going to be um, uh, construction and large debris, uh, things like that. Time's, Time's right. up. I'm ready. Can I just give one last little closing well, punch? Ten, Great. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else would like to speak on this uh, resolution? None? Is there a motion to close the public portion? Motion. Second. This thing, motion by Rafano, second by Ron Rios. All in favor say aye. 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 Is there a motion to adopt resolution 092272? Field of Director, um, I have a motion um, to adopt that, but I also have a statement that I, I would like to read okay, at this point in time. The statement is uh, uh, my thoughts and as to why I'm supporting the resolution based upon my review of everything that's been submitted by uh, Mr. Hills. By the applicant, um, I actually visited the site both on the New Brunswick side and also the North Brunswick side, and um, the statement goes as follows: First, I'm satisfied that all noise, traffic, and environmental matters will be thoroughly and properly addressed by the appropriate regula regulating agencies. The vote this evening simply initiates a process of examination of this application by the State of New Jersey of the impacts related to matters such as traffic air emission monitoring and controls, noise mitigation, and all environmental concerns which may arise from this facility. I am confident that the NJDOT and the NJDEP will do its job in assuring county residents of the necessary and appropriate controls to be placed upon this facility. All county residents will benefit by the very strict standards and protections afforded by the NJDOT, NJDEP, and other outside agencies that control all the issues which result from this application. I am also satisfied that the proposed location is 
uniquely suited for the proposed facility in that it fully complies with the local zoning requirements of the City of New Brunswick and has in fact already been approved by the City's Planning Board. Also, and of no small consequence, the innovative use of railroad to transport materials off the site is in the best interest of county residents since it will serve to minimize the truck traffic and related environmental impacts that this type of facility might otherwise generate. The transfer of materials by rail is critical in that it also allows for the reduced cost of disposal and transporting of the materials to other locations. It is worth noting that no other transfer station site located in Middlesex County currently utilizes on-site rail transfer for disposal of materials. With respect to operations, this facility will be accepting exclusively ID 13 and 13C waste material, which is bulky waste and construction and demolition debris. It will be only one of two facilities in the county to exclusively accept such waste. County residents and businesses will benefit from this localized facility and that materials will be transported off-site by means of rail, thereby lowering transportation costs. The in-county transfer station will be a less expensive alternative uh, to disposing of these materials when taking into consideration lower transportation and disposal fees, resulting in a financial benefit to customers, including businesses and companies presently located in Middlesex County. I am pleased that the county, through our Division of Solid Waste, in cooperation with the applicant, have heard the concerns and opinions expressed by the residents, both before us and also during the public hearing process. The applicant has agreed to conditions that minimize any potential negative impacts this facility may cause to residents living in proximity to this site. For example, the restriction on the hours of business operations to Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., including being closed on Sunday, and the further limiting of rail car poles from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., together with the applicant's commitment to provide additional landscaping and screening materials to be planted and installed in Frisch Park in North Brunswick so as to provide an enhanced buffer area. Additional conditions which will form a part of an approval of this facility will include items such as the applicant will provide an air curtain on all overhead door openings and air filtration system to prevent emissions such as dust exiting the building. The special waste area is an area designed for only large miscellaneous iron, too large and cumbersome to be processed inside the building. This material will be transported to the proper scrap metal recycling facility. A six foot high chain link fence with entry gates will be installed around the entire property perimeter for security purposes. A preventive, pre preventative maintenance program will be contracted to an independent pest control vendor for rodent and pest control at the facility. The facility will not accept any type of hazardous materials. All facility personnel will be NJDEP and OSHA trained to inspect all material types. This freeholder board should and will require these conditions to become permanent conditions in this resolution if approved. Finally, and perhaps most significant, the elimination of the permanent restriction of municipal household waste at the, at the proposed site will serve to address the concerns expressed by the Middlesex County Utilities Authority relating to its financial security and the need to support the solid waste needs of Middlesex County residents. The county landfill has served our county residents by providing a priority location for our county's household waste and the financial stability created thereby has allowed the MCUA to continue to support and assist in subsidizing the county's enormously successful recycling activities and its ability to provide host community benefits to East Brunswick Edison, South River, and Cerebral. I know there's been a lot of concern about what can happen in the future. Freela Polis uh, asked that question before. Rich Hills explained the process. But I think we should go a step further. And I think the way to go a step further that is to, in addition to the conditions I've just laid out, I believe it's appropriate and I recommend to the board that we include a, uh, in a recorded deed a restriction encumbering the property, prohibiting in the future the, uh, any household waste being at this facility. This will ensure that no change in the law or public policy in the future can ever remove this restriction. With that said, uh, I move the resolution. Okay, good. 
Motion to adopt the resolution 092272. Need a second? S uh, Director, I'll second that and I'd like to make a statement as okay. well. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've, we've received many uh, letters and documentations, emails, and a lot of correspondence from the SWAC. And I also have uh, visited the site. And I take this decision and this, and this consideration very seriously. This application reviewed this evening is much different and improved from the one first filed by the applicant early this year with SWAC. Hours of operation have been significantly reduced. Landscape screening will be planted in Frisch Park. The rail car pulls removing the bulky waste and construction demolition debris will be limited to 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And most importantly, Type 10, which is municipal solid waste, will not be permitted at the site. Our role tonight is not to grant or deny approval of an application to operate a transfer facility at this particular site. Rather, it is to determine if the proposed facility should be included in the county solid waste management plan. As noted by Mr. Hills previously, any approval we may grant tonight is merely an initial step in the process of obtaining the necessary approvals from the DEP to operate a transfer station materials recovery facility at the site. There are many advantages to our solid waste plan provided by this application. Rail is being used to take material off the site, thereby minimizing truck trips generated by the site. Rail is a more energy efficient means of transportation. Accordingly, because this would be the first transfer station in the county to use rail. This site will reduce energy use compared to taking the material to other transfer stations because all other local transfer stations truck out the debris. The materials will be disposed of through a state of the art facility that, in and of itself, will help to reduce energy use. And everyone knows that this board is always committed to, co uh, to uh, reduce energy use. The ability to keep type 13 and 13C waste out of our county landfill allows us to extend the useful life of the landfill, enabling the county and its municipalities to continue to enjoy tipping fees for domestic household, household waste at rates far below the industry standard found around the state. Removal of the type 13 and 13C waste outside the county, indeed outside the state, means we will not have to use valuable open space in an already densely populated and well-developed area to dispose of these materials. There are other potential benefits of an eventual approval as well. New jobs in tough economic times are created. Significant municipal revenues are created and rateables are generated to help stabilize property taxes. But can these benefits be achieved without significant adverse impact on the surrounding area? As far as I know, the Jersey Avenue area in New Brunswick as well has been industrialized for many years. I believe from the hearing that we had the last time that this has been a development, industrial development since at least the 1920s. The use of the site as a transfer station is specifically permitted under New Brunswick zoning regulation and North Brunswick's master plan states that New Brunswick's designation of this area for industrial use matches well with the adjacent uses in North Brunswick. However, residents from the residential neighborhood in North Brunswick across the Northeast Carter rail line from the subject property have expressed concern about the proposed use and not unreasonably so. The concerns expressed involve air pollution and dust, traffic, noise, contamination at the site, and the presence of hazardous materials and waste loads arriving at the site. The applicant and the city of New Brunswick contend that the number of truck trips to the site at peak times are minuscule compared to existing levels of traffic and will have a sig significantly less adverse impact than many of the other uses allowed for the site under the city's zoning code, and that truck traffic will primarily use Route 1 and Jersey Avenue, both state highways designed to accommodate truck traffic to access the site. The applicant further states that hazardous materials cannot 
and will not be received at the site and that appropriate measures have and will be taken to mitigate noise and aesthetic concerns. But these are issues best addressed by the entities specifically charged with the responsibility to do so, the DEP. The review process required for DEP, DEP approval is much more technical and extensive than our role here today. The applicant must submit further traffic, noise, environmental, and air pollution studies with the DEP, which has the responsibility and expertise to, to review the information provided to ensure compliance with the state's rules and regulations and make sure that the residents' concerns are satisfactory, <coughs> satisfactorily addressed. The DEP process is a public one, inclusive of a public hearing, which I encourage all to participate in. Because of the potential benefits to be gained and the positive impact on the handling of construction and demolition in our county from the inclusion of this proposal in the county <coughs> solid waste plan that I mentioned earlier, I believe it is prudent to approve this application with certain conditions so that we can complete this initial stage of the process and allow the DEP to undertake its overall examination of the solid waste facility permit application where the concerns regarding the use of this particular site as a transfer station can be better and more appropriately determined. Again, this, the use of this site is a transfer station and specifically permitted under New Brunswick zoning regulation and North Brunswick's master plan. And I think it's so important to be reminded that if we were not to approve this resolution, that we could be involved in unnecessary legal fees that I don't think the county should incur. Thank you, Director. Okay, uh, Madam uh, Clerk, roll call. Freeholder Barrett. Uh, before I vote, I just would like to say that this certainly has been a long process, but I'm proud to be a freeholder and to see that the process does work and every all the residents have had a chance to um, express their views on more than one occasions. And I want to thank um, Rich Hill's Solid Waste um, Division um, for all, all that he has done. I would just personally want to say that I would look forward to working with North Brunswick um, on any traffic problems that do occur. And I believe all of the freeholders sitting here um, would feel the same way. Um, and also, um, the applicant, uh, uh, the, from what I see, the applicant certainly has shown that he's willing not to work not only with the county of solid waste, but with the North Brunswick residents. So if there are some questions that are uh, unanswered, uh, I think that the residents should feel free to speak to uh, Mr. Hills or the applicant at any time. I'm sure that they would be willing to answer any further questions um, and I will vote yes freeholder polos uh, just a quick comment I think in the initial um, application and discussion with people in North Brunswick I had serious concerns about citing the facility there what the precautions were going to be and what the long-term impact could be it seems that over the uh, few months that this has been going on as Rich Hills alluded to, there has been a lot of dialogue and a lot of communication, and I believe that many of the concerns have been addressed and many of the issues that were originally um, kind of confusing perhaps to some have been clarified, and I think that uh, there certainly seems to be in general support. I can understand, though, as residents who may be living in the area, there can be ongoing concerns about what happens a year from now and five years from now. I think a lot of those issues have been addressed by the um, uh, explanation that Mr. Hills gave about the process that would be involved for changes uh, in the future uh, where there would have to be a public hearing it would have to come back to likely SWAC as well as the freeholder board for substantial changes and I think that can give at least some comfort level to the residents in the neighborhood that there won't be any substantial changes to the facility or its operation without uh, an opportunity once again to come forward and be heard um, in fact I was going to suggest tonight that in the future although ID 10 household trash was not something that was going to be allowed I was actually going to recommend tonight that in the future, perhaps uh, through the SWAC process, North Brunswick would be given an opportunity to have some veto power over their, that consideration in the future. Uh, but I would certainly sway from that and support uh, 
uh, Freeholder Rafano's suggestion that there be a specific deed restriction for ID 10, uh, which certainly has even a higher level of permanence to it and would give the residents in the area assurance that it cannot, could not be a consideration under any circumstances in the future. So again, I would strongly support uh, a deed restriction for that. And uh, with all the other considerations that have been addressed, I would uh, give my support to the resolution and I would vote yes. Freeholder Rufano? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Uh, person not voting, but I want to say this for the benefit of my husband's relatives and many good friends in North Brunswick. I do not belong to the New Brunswick Planning Board. I do not belong to the Board of Adjustment. This matter has not come to the New Brunswick City Council, but I have a conflict because I'm, um, I'm an official. Nor has the mayor reached out to me for any help in this because he knows the ethical rules. So I just want to uh, make sure that people understand my situation because I sit on this board and the board across the street. However, I recuse myself from the voting and I will say again, President not voting. Freeholder Director Delina. Yes, I just want to remind the public, if you have any more questions, we still have a period at the end of the meeting where you can still speak in five more minutes. So you have another shot if you have to say anything. Okay. <clears throat> Where's Tommy? Did he leave? No, stay here. You can go. <laughs> okay. Proclamation, commitment resolution, and correspondence. Madam Clerk, are there any commitment resolutions that, this evening? Uh, yes, we have one proclamation recognizing December 21st as Homeless Persons Memorial Day in Middlesex County and the following commemorative resolutions. First is recognizing Freeholder Blanquita Valenti as she was honored by New Brunswick Tomorrow as the 2009 recipient of the Public-Private Partnership Award. Next is recognizing Freeholder Mildred Scott as she was honored by the Fir First Baptist Church of Woodbridge for her, her involvement in law enforcement and as a public official. Next is recognizing Dale Caldwell of the City of New Brunswick as he has been named the 2009 School Board Member of the Year by the New Jersey School Boards Association. <coughs> Next is recognizing Mark Finkelstein of the City of New Brunswick as he has been named the 2010 Central Regional Superintendent of the Year by the New Jersey Association of School Administrators. Next is recognizing Dennis Dahl, President of Middlesex Water Company as he was elected Chairman of the New Jersey Utilities Association. Next is recognizing Joseph Earhart of the Department of Corrections and Youth Services as he has received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the New Jersey Division of Fire Safety's Juvenile <coughs> Fire Center Prevention Council and the New Jersey Chapter of the International Association of Arson Investigators. Next is recognizing Linda Christina, Executive Secretary to Freeholder Director Delina on the occasion of her retirement. And last is recognizing Richard Ebright of Boy Scout Troop 252 as he has achieved his Eagle Scout Award. Thank you. Um, thank you. Is there a motion to adopt the commitment resolutions? Motion. Motion by Rafano, second by Ron Rios. Madam Clerk, roll call. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rufano? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Delina? Who's going to somebody make it a presentation? Freeholder Valenti. Oh. Give him a presentation there, okay? Uh, it is an honor for me, on behalf of the Board of Freeholders, to make this uh, proclamation and present it to our new executive director of uh, Coming Home, which is a uh, 501c corporation that has been established as, as part of the HUD uh, designation that all the counties in, the, in our state, and I'm sure in, in all the states, how to present a 10-year uh, plan to prevent homelessness. And as you heard me before, uh, on Monday, December 21st at 5 o'clock, 
um, we will uh, have the ceremony and event, Homeless Persons Memorial Day in Middlesex County. And I want to um, give this to our Executive Director, Bob Stewart from East Brunswick, uh, who is the Director uh, of Coming Home. Uh, congratulations. I think she wants Thank you, Freeholder Valenti. Members of the Board of Children Freeholders, it's an honor and a, and a privilege to accept this proclamation on behalf of uh, the, board, the Board of Directors of Coming Home of Middlesex County, the very fine and tireless and hardworking agency staffs in the county, as well as the social service agency providers we work very tirelessly with. And most of all, on behalf of the homeless people throughout the county who are homeless tonight, and those who we have lost, and all of our collective will and determination and commitment to help those who don't have a shelter, to give them a place to live, and to feel secure, and to return back to a productive life. Thank you very much. Yes. We have a resolution here recognizing Dale Caldwell. He has been recognized as board member of the year by the New Jersey School Boards, of a School Boards Association. He's been a president of the Middlesex Regional Education Services Commission, and he has been chosen for his dedication, leadership, and vision as a local school board member. He has served as the Middlesex Regional Education Services Commission board president since 2001 and has been a member of the New Brunswick Board of Education for 11 years. His recent book, School to Work to Success, reinforces his desire to keep the school to work to life connection alive in schools. He's been a tremendous asset to many, many people, many children, and he is a great partner. And I congratulate you, Dale. Thank you very much, Freeholder Rios, uh, Freeholder Director, Freeholders, fellow New Brunswick resident, uh, 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 Freeholder. Um, this is a great honor, and uh, uh, you know I feel blessed to be before this distinguished uh, a group of leaders, before the audience. One of the things that uh, that we've been trying to do, and the reason I'm accepting this on the on behalf of the Board of uh, New Brunswick as well as the Middlesex Regional Educational Services Commission, is to give every child an opportunity to aspire to careers that, that they can be successful at, whether they're special needs students, whether they're students from urban communities, whether they're, they're any students at all. And you're all tremendous role models that uh, I hope will continue to interact with young people because uh, at the end of the day, it's about finding careers that people are passionate about. And I think we need to focus more of our education, especially public education, on helping to prepare kids to be productive citizens and valuable members of the workforce. So I want to thank you all very much. It's a great honor to be here. I'd like to also call up at this time Mark Finkelstein. Mark has been uh, named the 2010 Central Regional Superintendent of the Year by the New Jersey Association of School Administrators. I've got to know Mark. I'm almost on the uh, I'm on the board now, just short of uh, two years. Time flies, and uh, he's been a great partner. He's really been a great partner. He sits on the college uh, Middlesex County College Board of Trustees, and we've been able to uh, connect and getting uh, working together very well as as partners. And it really gives me an honor and a pr uh, pleasure to present this to you because he's uh, seen an entity that serves 5,500 stu students daily at seven schools and provides transportation to 85,000 students. The commission has grown from a budget of 26 million in 1996 to this year's budget of $75 million, which is used to provide special services to local school districts. Mark has expanded so many opportunities for so many. 
and it gives me great pleasure to present this to you, Mark. Thank you for your holder, and thank you very much to the Board of Chosen Freeholders for your gracious invitation this evening. Um, I really have to recognize Dale Caldwell uh, as, as our board president. He's been the board president since 2001. Uh, his vision, his support, his friendship uh, has meant a great deal personally to me as well as to the entire commission family. And I can't emphasize uh, what he has meant to our commission enough. Uh, to the freeholder board, I will say this. This is a, an award uh, while I deeply appreciate it, it really is an award to be shared. Shared with our board of directors, uh, with our staff uh, who perform miracles, with some of the most challenged students you can possibly imagine each and every day, uh, and with you, the Freeholder Board, uh, because uh, the Freeholders of Middlesex County uh, were one of the first groups to support what was then a fledgling organization. Uh, back in the 70s and 80s. And for some reason, you placed your confidence in us, uh, and, and we hope that we haven't let you down uh, over, the, over the decades that have ensued. Uh, you don't get enough credit for what you do, uh, but for those of you, and most of you have already visited our schools, because of you, families have been restored, children are walking, talking, hearing, gainfully employed. I mean, of all the many legacies that each of you will leave as freeholders, I believe that will be the greatest legacy. From a fiscal perspective, uh, because of your efforts uh, over the past 15 years, over $25 million have been saved in taxpayer dollars uh, through tuition costs and transportation and energy. So you don't hear it enough but your kindness and your generosity and support uh, are greatly appreciated and will always be valued uh, by our children and the families of Middlesex County. And one other item which you may be interested in knowing, the Commission employs 1,250 individuals, 80% of whom are Middlesex County residents. And that's important as well because of your efforts. Thank you so much. Uh, I great, greatly, greatly appreciate everything that you've done for us. Good night. Okay. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, would you please read the correspondence? No, there's, 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 there's still, still one more. more. Freeholder Church. Call us. Yes. <laughs> Please guys pick up. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, it uh, gives me great pleasure tonight to uh, ask the board to adopt this resolution recognizing Dennis Dahl. Uh, Dennis Dahl is the president of Middlesex Water Company, a company that's been in business since, I believe, 1897 or thereabouts. Uh, in fact, it had been recognized in 2008 as one of the top trustworthy companies in the nation. Uh, this is a significant company. It's a significant <coughs> operator of utility and water service throughout. New Jersey as well as Delaware. Uh, they also employ many people from Middlesex County and provide good paying jobs to people across this state and across the state of Delaware. Uh, but it, it, there are a couple things that you might not know. Number one, Dennis Dahl is a great resident of Middlesex County, a resident of Monroe Township, uh, members of the board and ladies and gentlemen, so he's one of our own, certainly. And he recently became chairperson of the New Jersey Utilities Association. Uh, this is not a small association. This is a very large association that employs collectively over 32,000 people throughout the state of New Jersey. Uh, it has an infrastructure value of over $24 billion uh, and services residents uh, in excess of $9 million throughout the state of New Jersey. So it's a significant association that Dennis has now become chairman of the board of directors of that association. Uh, and those are the kind of the prominent visible things that you know about Dennis, but I'm going to just take a minute to tell you about some of the things you don't know. Um, he is extremely accessible. Uh, every time I've had to call him for assistance or a suggestion or his input on something, uh, the call is returned almost immediately. If he's, if he's not available, it's, turn, it's returned immediately. When we've asked him to participate in various uh, initiatives that we're doing in Middlesex County, he's always the first one to volunteer and say, how can I help and how can my company help? And most importantly, and this, is, this you don't see too often from CEOs and presidents of large companies, 
Uh, he doesn't delegate it to someone. He shows up himself and will come and actually participate and ask what need, what's needed to be done rather than just having some administrative assistant or executive attend on his behalf. He's been helping us with the development of our sustainability plan in Middlesex County. He's been an active member of that. And most recently I had to reach out to him for a new initiative that we may be working on to try to promote sustainability within our youth and so forth. And again, picked the phone right up and said, how can I help? I like the idea and we'll see if we can get the Utilities Association involved. So Dennis, this resolution is being presented to you for not only what you've done for the water company, what you've done for the Utilities Association, but what you've done for Middlesex County and being such a very valued and trustworthy member and constituent that we have and someone who's always willing to volunteer. Congratulations. Thank you, Freeholder Polos, for those very kind words and thank you to the entire Freeholder Board for this honor. Um, I do accept that on behalf of the member companies of the New Jersey Utilities Association, it, do, it is comprised of the 16 largest utilities in the state. Our board of directors is comprised of the leaders of the largest utilities in the state. And I can tell you that some of the comments that uh, Freeholder Polo shared with you about my company and our involvement is very characteristic of all of those utility companies. Uh, we employ a lot of people in the county and the state. We have a lot of infrastructure, as Freeholder Polo has indicated. We are part of the communities. We are a big part of the economy. We, most of our companies have been here for more than 100 years, and I can assure you that that group of people I work with works hard every day so that you and the residents of our county can continue to take utility services for granted for the next 100 years because we don't want utility services to be at the top of your list of, of priorities. So I am greatly honored by this, and I thank you very much for those kind words and look forward to working with you. Heart and Warren Chicky can come up, please. <laughs> Joseph, this is a um, resolution for the Board of Chosen Freeholders, and you've been a county employee for, I guess, close to 30 years? 33, 33 years, okay. But this award is. Uh, Middlesex County residents expect you to do your job and to do your job well, but this is going beyond your job. And the resolution is for worthy recognition of a Lifetime Achievement Award from Juvenile Firefighters Preventive Council, Division of Fire Safety, New Jersey Chapter, or International Association of Arson Investigations. And I've asked Warden Chickie to come up here to speak on your behalf because I think he's known you much longer than I have, and I think he can do much more honor than I am as Warden Chickie. Thank you, Freeholder. I'm sure you folks are glad that I work in a jail and I don't talk too much and get, get this over with time. Um, Joe said 33, 33 years. 33 years is the first, he's the first person I met when I came to work. He was there about three, four weeks ahead of me. So I've known him for a, for a long time. And as far as this resolution goes, in, in our business, you don't get a lot of awards or, or accolades. You usually get people yelling at you. Um, Joe is a tireless worker for the county, for the children of the county, and it, it goes without people uh, patting him on his back. So this is well deserved. And uh, more importantly, when uh, when the freeholders decided to combine our departments, and uh, I was to take over juvenile again, I was glad that Joe was still there because to to have someone there that you can trust and you know does a good job is an important thing. But more importantly, he's a good friend. Thank you. Thank you, Freeholder Scott, um, Freeholder Director, members of the board, and of course, Warden Chickie. Um, I'm honored uh, to be recognized for something that I love to do, and that's to help kids get around the issue of playing with fire and using fire inappropriately, and setting fire is a very dangerous thing. In the past 18 years since the Firewatch program has been in effect in Middlesex County, and it was started by two firefighters, myself and the former county um, mental health administrator, Tina McCormick, we have seen over 1,200 children. We have responded to their needs so that they no longer use fire inappropriately. I can't tell you how many lives have been saved, millions of dollars of property damage, 
And most importantly, kids are safe because of our efforts. It's the efforts of the fire officials in all the county um, fire departments and fire districts in Middlesex County coordinated with the help of both the Department of Corrections and Youth Services and the Department of Human Services under Tom Seilheimer that provides us some clerical and administrative support as well. And I'm most happy to report to the Board of Freeholders that we have no budget and it's a completely volunteer effort. And I thank you very much for your support. Thank you for voting. We have a letter from the State of New Jersey Department of Transportation indicating the traffic regulation order regarding speed limits on New Jersey, New Jersey Route 18 in New Brunswick have been approved. Notice of public hearings from Pivotal Utility Holdings Incorporated doing business as Elizabethtown Gas relative to revisions in the utility infrastructure enhancement and weather normalization clause. Public hearings will be held on December 29th in Hunterdon County and later December 29th in Rahway Municipal Council. A resolution from the Morris County Board of Freeholders endorsing and supporting the positions proposed by the League of Municipalities in the white paper and the six county coalition documents submitted relative to binding interest arbitration with respect to police and fire personnel. A resolution from the Edison Township indicating the, their appointments to the Dismal Swamp Commission and advising that Robert Deal and Robert Takash have been appointed to that commission. Minutes of the Middlesex County Improvement Authority meeting held November 10th. Minutes of the Middlesex County Planning Board meeting held November 10th monthly report of investments from the Office of the County Treasurer for the month of November, a copy of the audited financial statements for the fiscal year ended June 30, 2009, as submitted by Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Metuchen and submitted, prepared by the accounting firm of Sobel and Company, LLC, minutes of the Board of Education of the Vocational Schools in Middlesex County, their organization meeting and regular meeting held November 9th, a petition from the Sayreville condo residents and residents for a clean Sayreville in opposition to the creation of the Main Street bypass. And that's all. Okay, you need a motion to accept the correspondence? Motion. Second. 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 Favor, everybody say favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Is there any resolution to be amended? Yes, for the director, resolution 092189, which is uh, located on page three. This is the personnel list. Uh, there are several amendments which uh, have been circulated to the board on the dais. And it would be appropriate to amend uh, that resolution with a motion, second, and roll call. Need a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Ron Rio, second by Blanquita Valenti. Roll call vote. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rufano? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? <clears throat> yes. Freeholder Director Delina? Yes. Any resolutions to be added? There are none. None. Is there any resolution to be held? There are none. Any resolution to be voided? There are none. We're well, doing okay. Pretty we'll good. We'll open the meeting now to the public <laughs> and discussion. Any resolution on the agenda? Anybody like to speak? Motion to close the public hearing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gone. No way. No way. One question, that's what you're getting. Try that stuff. Watch your keys, they're falling off. No, they're not. Got them <laughs> securely. Page three. You were just talking about 2189. I took note that some of the people um, are coming back and of course are being rehired by the county. Um, frequently, I think it's always been a, a matter of young men and women 
uh, coming out of high school uh, and going into the military because it was a job opportunity, plus the opportunities for education and so forth. But I'm wondering now how many are being almost forced to re-enlist given the jobs on the outside, the chances of getting jobs. Uh, also, given the economy, I'm wondering how many have left jobs in the uh, Guard and the Reserves to go on active duty and come back and find maybe the company isn't there anymore that they worked for. Uh, or the, the opportunities for employment, re-employment, uh, because of the cutbacks in so many of the companies. Uh, I just hope that as much as possible is being done in terms of the veteran uh, employment and re-employment, uh, because those people certainly deserve every support that we uh, can provide uh, for them. Um, what was there was another one over here. Oh, I, I did want to uh, comment on page 11. 2257, again, it's a matter of, it's the veterans housing that's being provided by the Reformed Church of Island Park. I think that that turned out, though there was some dissent for a while, I believe that turned out very well, and it, uh, it more of it is needed along the way because uh, it's just, given the housing situation, in uh, in our county and Somerset County, both of them, we uh, we need to do everything that we can to provide satisfactory veterans housing. Thank you. Okay, Is there anybody else? Nobody here. Okay. Anybody else would like to speak? Motion to close. Motion to close the uh, public Second. hearing. Second by Blanquita Valenti. Roll call vote. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rafano? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Delina? Yes. A motion to close the, to close the meeting. We need to. We got new notes. Okay, we got to go back. Does any freeholder have any resolutions that they wish to remove from the consent agenda to vote separately? Yes, yeah. I, oh, I'm sorry. I do a one we already voted on, which was 2272, uh, President Mooney. But uh, there's resolution 09 2240, 09 2262, and resolution 09 2268. Okay. Uh, yes. yes, I have. Uh, 092264. Okay. And I have 092274. 092274. Okay. Okay. Right. okay, we need a motion. Next. Uh, field the director, a motion would be in order to adopt the consent agenda consisting of resolution numbers 092162 <coughs> through 092274, including none which were previously held, but excluding resolution 092272, which was previously voted upon and excluding resolutions 09-2240, 09-2262, 09-2268, 09-2274, to be voted upon separately. Okay, need a vote. Motion. Motion. Back it. Second by uh, Ron Rios. Roll call vote. <laughs> Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rufano? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Delina? Yes. Now, feel the director, it would be appropriate to consider resolutions 09 2240, 09 2262, and 09 2268, which were excluded by Freeholder Valenti. Motion. Motion. Motion Back by it. Rafano, second by Ron Rio. It's roll call vote. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rafano? Yes. 
Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Present. Not voting. Freeholder Director Delina? Yes. Okay. And now, uh, Freeholder Director, we should consider resolution 092264, which was excluded by Freeholder Scott. Motion. Motion. Motion by Second. Rafael, seconded by Blanquita Valenti. No, it was uh, Freeholder Rios. Ron Rios? Yes. Okay. Ron <laughs> Rios. Okay, roll call vote. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rufano? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Present, not voting. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director <clears throat> Delina? Yes. And then finally, Freeholder Director, we should consider resolution 092274, which was excluded by Freeholder Polos. Mo need a motion. Motion. Motion by Rufano. Second. Second by Ron Rios. Roll call vote. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Present, not voting. Freeholder Rufano? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Delina? Yes. Now we have to have an open public meeting on any of these resolutions. Anybody has anything to say on these resolutions? No. And general public. General public. General public. Anybody? Nothing? Motion to close. Motion to close. Second by Ron, uh, Ron Rios. Vote, go vote. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rufano? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Delina? Yes. Motion adjourned. So moved. Second motion and we roll call vote. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rufano? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director?